Welcome back to the College of Glycation, the podcast where we explore the sneaky ways sugar compromises our bodies. I'm your host again today, Paul Reynolds, and I'm a biomedical scientist as well as a professor of cell biology. We've covered the basics in previous episodes, like what glycation really is and why it's a big deal for longevity. Today, we're building on that foundation with an episode focused on glycation's role in muscle health. We'll touch base on the fundamentals of glycation briefly, then explore how it accelerates muscle decline, disrupts key signaling pathways, and what you can do about it through smart training and eating. This one's especially relevant as we age, since muscle loss or sarcopenia can turn everyday tasks into real challenges. So stick around, and by the end, you'll have a clearer picture of why keeping glycation in check could be your secret weapon for staying strong. Let's start with a quick refresher on glycation, because if you've listened to our earlier episodes, you know that it is the root of a lot of age-related trouble. Glycation happens when your sugar molecules in your bloodstream think glucose from a carb-heavy meal, for instance, attach themselves to proteins or fats without any enzymatic help. It's a random, non-enzymatic reaction, like sugar gluing itself to your body's building blocks. Over time, these attachments rearrange into advanced glycation end products, or AGEs for short. AGEs are stable, stubborn compounds that build up in the tissues especially as we get older, or if our blood sugar levels stay chronically elevated. They're not just passive squatters, for instance. They, in fact, trigger inflammation, oxidative stress, and interfere with the normal cell's function. In muscles, which are made up of proteins like actin and myosin that need to slide smoothly for contraction, This buildup of ages is particularly problematic. Imagine your muscle fibers as a well-oiled machine, involving again actin and myosin. Glycation essentially throws sand into the gears, making everything stiffer and less efficient. Now, why focus on muscles? Well, as we discussed in a previous episode, muscle loss with aging isn't just about looking less toned. It's a major threat to independence and overall health. Sarcopenia is the age-related decline in muscle mass, strength, and function. Its onset is gradual. After about age 30 or so, most people lose about 0.5 to 1% of muscle mass per year. But after age 60 or 70, the rate accelerates. Sarcopenia affects up to 50% of people over 80 years of age, leading to frailty, falls, and even higher mortality risk. The consequences are indeed profound. Reduced mobility, the falls that I've mentioned, and again, loss of independence. And glycation plays a starring role in this process. Studies show that ages accumulate more in aging muscles, correlating with weaker grip strength, slower walking speeds, and overall muscle decline. For instance, higher levels of ages in the skin or blood have already been linked to reduced muscle mass and function in adults over 30, and even more so in those over age 65. Now, this is not just a correlation. In fact, ages directly contribute to the problem by cross-linking onto muscle proteins. Cross-linking is like tying knots in a rope. Ages form bonds between collagen molecules in the muscle's extracellular matrix. That's the supportive scaffolding around your muscle fibers. Collagen is the most abundant protein in your body, providing structure as well as elasticity. But when ages cross-link to collagen, the matrix stiffens, reducing the muscle's ability to stretch and contract effectively. This stiffness impairs force production 
and makes muscles more prone to injury. But it gets worse. This cross-linking doesn't just affect the structure, it also hampers repair and growth. Muscles are not static. They're constantly turning over proteins through a balance of breakdown and synthesis. When you're young, a workout or even daily activity triggers repair signals, rebuilding stronger fibers. But with ages, that process falters. The stiffened matrix disrupts satellite cells. Those are the stem cells in muscles that are responsible for regeneration. These cells struggle to activate and fuse into new muscle tissue when the environment is rigid and inflamed, especially from the buildup of ages. Research currently shows that ages promote muscle atrophy or breakdown by ramping up muscle protein degradation, while at the same time slowing down synthesis, and the net loss is prominent. In animal models and human studies, elevated ages are tied to smaller muscle fibers, especially the fast twitch ones that give you power and speed. Over time, this shifts your muscle composition toward slower, weaker fibers, accelerating the process of sarcopenia. It's like your muscles are aging faster than the rest of you, trapped in a cycle where damage accumulates without proper fixes. So let's shift gears to signaling because glycation doesn't just stop at physical cross-linking, it also compromises your body's communication systems as well. One key player here is insulin, the hormone secreted by the pancreas that not only manages blood sugar, but also regulates protein, uh, muscle protein metabolism. Insulin normally promotes protein synthesis, helping muscles grow and repair after stress. But in aging, and especially with high glycation, muscles develop insulin resistance. They no longer respond appropriately to that hormone's impact. This means the insulin signal doesn't get through as effectively, blunting the anabolic response. That's the building up phase that you experience in muscles. Think of it as knocking on a door that won't open. Insulin arrives, but the muscle cells ignore it, leading to less muscle protein synthesis and more protein breakdown. Studies have shown that older adults need supraphysiological levels of insulin, just super high doses, to kickstart muscle protein building, unlike younger folks where normal levels would be sufficient. Unfortunately, this resistance ties back to ages, which activate receptors for ages called RAGE. That's the receptor for advanced glycation end products. And once that receptor is activated, it sparks inflammation and oxidative stress, and both will interfere with insulin pathways. Specifically, in this case, ages disrupt a signaling cascade called AKT mTOR. That's a crucial pathway for protein synthesis. mTOR is like the master switch for building muscle proteins. When it's on, synthesis ramps up. But in insulin resistant states, driven by glycation, this switch, the mTOR switch, stays off more often, and that will block muscle growth. Now, this isn't just a theory. Research, in fact, in older adults demonstrates that age related insulin resistance directly reduces muscle protein metabolism, contributing to sarcopenia. Feel free to check out the show notes that list a lot of these publications. One example is in a controlled experiment. In this case, infusing insulin locally into leg muscle showed a blunted response for seniors compared to the young, with lower rates of protein buildup resulting. And glycation exacerbates this because higher age levels predict poorer muscle function, 
and even future disabilities, including walking issues. This is indeed a vicious loop. High blood sugar fuels more glycation, which worsens insulin resistance, which then lets blood sugar rise even further, all while your muscles waste away. Fortunately, this is not only a doom and gloom story. We can fight back with targeted strategies, starting with resistance training. Exercise isn't just about burning calories. It's a powerful anti-glycation tool. Resistance training, think about weightlifting, body weight exercise, calisthenics, or even resistance bands, can build muscle mass and strength while improving your insulin sensitivity. In older adults with type 2 diabetes, where glycation runs rampant, meta-analyses show that regular resistance sessions can lower your HbA1c levels. HbA1c is the percentage of your hemoglobin that has been glycated. A1c is therefore a wonderful marker of long-term blood sugar control. And the research here again showed that regular resistance sessions lowered A1c, in this case, by about 0.5%. And that's meaningful because it reduces age formation at the source. High-intensity resistance work seems particularly effective, boosting muscle strength by about 38% and countering sarcopenia. So says the literature on this subject. Now, why is that? Well, it stimulates muscle protein pathways, overriding some of that insulin resistance, and it enhances blood flow to clear out ages. Even a single bout of aerobic exercises can temporarily fix age-related insulin blunting in muscle protein metabolism by improving endothelial function. That's the health of your blood vessel linings. So pair all of this with nutrition, and you've got a one-two punch against glycation in your muscles. The goal is to minimize dietary ages, right? And as in addition to support your body's defenses. Ages are not only made in your body, although the majority that you experience are. They're also found in the foods that we eat, especially highly processed, over-grilled, or over-fried items. To cut back, focus on a diet rich in fresh vegetables and fruits. These are low in ages and packed with antioxidants that can scavenge free radicals. Free radicals are involved in the glycation pathway. Consider steaming or poaching instead of overcooking your meats. Those effects can lower age formation. Beverages also matter. Skip sugary drinks and opt instead for waters or teas. Those are known to have malleard reaction inhibitors, compounds, of course, that block the age reactions. Natural compounds can also shine in this space. Imagine polyphenols from berries, green tea, or dark chocolate. All of those can chelate medical, uh, metals rather, and trap carbonyls, in effect halting age creation. You can also consider vitamins like vitamin C and E, alkaloids, or even carnosine from meat. These show promise in lab studies for breaking age crosslinks and preventing them from accruing. For muscle-specific benefits, let's consider prioritizing protein sources that support synthesis without spiking your sugar. In this case, lean meats, fish, and eggs are excellent. Branch-chain amino acids found in whey protein or eggs can also help regulate muscle metabolism and mitigate muscle atrophy. And don't forget overall carb management. Lowering refined sugars, like in processed foods, reduces endogenous age production, preserving your sensitivity to insulin.
Studies on healthy eating patterns like those from nutrition societies confirm that these habits not only slash dietary age intake, but they also modulate your metabolism and keeps your body age pool low. It's about consistency. Combine this with the resistance training that we've talked about and you're actively rebuilding muscle resistance against the assault of glycation. Wrapping up, uh, glycation's role in muscle health is a reminder that aging isn't an inevitable decline. It's often metabolic mischief that we can, in fact, manage. By understanding how age's cross-link proteins induce insulin resistance and block repair allows us to empower ourselves to act. Hit the weights, eat fresh and smart, and keep those sugars in check. That's the message. Thank you one and all for joining me today in this The College of Glycation. I look forward to next time where we tackle glycation in the brain. So stay continued for that. Until then, stay strong.